So, you know what? Uh, ignore the fan. Um, urban legends are somewhat of a mixed bag. You know, some of them are silly. Some of them are... In Damn, I fucked that up. Some of them have tons of intricate history that's important to their respective cultures woven in. Some of them are just plain... Stupid. So, today... I, as the number one authority of spooky things on the internet, self-proclaimed, of course, as any qualified individual is, have decided to tier list every urban legend that exists that I can think of. Uh, if you can think of any more, let me know. I might do another thing like this, but you'll have to wait a year because I'm not doing that in the middle of November. So, with all that said, let's get into the tier list. So we're going to start out with an absolute classic here, Bigfoot. Um, so when I think of Bigfoot, two people come to mind. You know, we have like old Cletus who sees stuff like this. He goes hunting in the woods every weekend with his hunting rifle because, you know, one time he he's caught a Bigfoot stealing a natty light off his porch or something some bullshit. But yeah, you know, there's that old guy and then there's exactly the... Futurama Bigfoot scientist. That's not that's not who that is. This guy. So with that said, I think that Bigfoot, while you know, he's he's a classic. He's he's fucking everything to urban legends. I think that the general story around him isn't that interesting, so I'm gonna go with a C tier. Next up, we have the Fresno Nightcrawlers. If anyone knows what that is, I'd be fucking shocked. So this is, this is what I'm talking about right here. Hold on. Do you see it? He has legs, I think. So basically what that is, is a man in Fresno, I forget when, um, he caught this weird white thing right here on his security camera but you know the footage automatically deleted itself so all he has is this grainy video footage of his monitor which i mean like who hasn't gone through that it feels like cctv cameras and stuff are designed to literally just like delete the footage if anything interesting happens basically this thing no one really can agree what it is some say they're like aliens some say they're they're their own little creatures uh some say they're ghosts uh i don't really know where the alien thing is coming from though to be honest they look a little bit too small to ever make it to a different planet like they don't even have arms or anything but they do kind of look like an alien ben 10 would transform into so i do see where they're coming from with that you know that wasn't the only sighting either they have this little one from Yosemite Park where not one, but actually two this time appeared. And I mean, look at that. That's not just a dude in a white bodysuit. I haven't even explained what this tier list is for. It's for um day seven of Spooky Week. Yeah, it's seven. It's the final day. Yeah, there's not much to say about the Nightcrawlers, I'll be honest. Um... There was one more sighting in Poland, I believe, but I looked at the video, I, it just kind of looks like a dude in a white hood, and I, I don't really, I don't really care enough to find that video again. But, you know, they're kind of cute, not in this picture I have right here, they look a little, a little bit silly, but, I mean, that there's other art of the Fresno Nightcrawlers that looks vaguely cute, so I'm gonna put it in B tier. Next up we have Nessie. You know this is another just classic. This picture I'm sure everyone has seen. You know Nessie's been in like Gravity Falls, been all over the media. I believe there's a Scooby-Doo episode about it. You know everyone knows who Nessie is. He's sort of like the Bigfoot of the water which is what I th honestly when I started researching Nessie I immediately thought oh this is gonna be like a easy d tier you know like it's just bigfoot but without the feet interestingly enough though there's actually some more behind it some people believe that the original sighting of nessie was actually in 
the year 565 in the hagiography of saint columba there's this whole passage about saint columba visiting lake ness river ness whatever it was called and um or wait maybe the town was called like loch ness or something i i have no don't ask me about scottish architecture land whatever the fuck basically there's this whole passage about him going there and then there's a bunch of people burying a body and he's like oh what's going on here and they tell him about a monster in the water and then he visits the lake and he's like oh uh, my follower go into the lake with the monster i'm not going in but you can do it for me uh, eventually the monster appears and saint columba with his saintly powers draws the monster away from his follower and people claim that that was like the first actual sighting that they never called him the loch ness monster in the thing though and it's like obviously lake monsters water beasts whatever big big thing in old literature i guess you know just any type of creature that can't be explained with logic back then because of that i will actually give it a c tier because you know while it's better than what i thought while it's better than what i thought i don't it doesn't like eclipse bigfoot or anything i'll give him a c tier next up is bloody mary now i don't know about all you but um you know so it's a children's game but for me it was a children's game where your older sister locks you in the bathroom and forces you to say bloody mary three times in the mirror in order to summon a vengeful spirit that wants to rip your eyes out for most people that probably wasn't that probably wasn't their experience you know it was probably just a story they heard growing up what i just described is the modern form of the ritual Originally, what was supposed to happen was a young woman is supposed to walk backwards up a flight of stairs in a darkened house holding a candle and a mirror hit up, down, left, right, A, B. And when they finished walking up the stairs, an image of their future husband was supposed to appear in the mirror. There was also a chance that instead of a man's face, a skull or grim reaper would show up, which meant that the woman would die before she would marry. The actual origins of the story, unknown. I'm sure every kid out there has heard some variation of the story describing the origin origins of the apparition that appears. For me personally, the story I heard was something along the lines of this. A woman who had drowned along with her two children now wanders as a spirit looking for people for the people who took her kids away. Obviously not the most realistic story, however, it worked for me when I was eight years old. Feel free to tell me the story you were told if you even know what this urban legend is, which I mean most people in the us at least should know what that is i don't know about other places but i'm pretty sure it's very popular here and you know my experience was pretty horrifying with this thing um but uh looking back it's just a funny little memory uh, i look back pretty fondly on that so i'm gonna give it an s tier honestly i like the story behind it i think it's fitting to have it at s tier now i don't know if you know I, this is pretty popular right okay I, I just don't know how to spell devil apparently so i'm pretty sure that this is a pretty popular little urban legend type thing the jersey devil did i spell jersey right yeah okay it was just devil none of these depictions are the same so i can't really describe exactly what it looks like I think this is a pretty good summation. It either looks like this, how a how Family Guy would draw an Irish man, or a little dragon guy. Which, you know, all of those, that's fine. So here's the story behind the Jersey Devil. So he's like a little interesting demon-esque creature that supposedly lives in new in the New Jersey Pine Barrens, which is in New Jersey if you can believe it. If the folklore surrounding this creature is to be believed, it was essentially born because God said, okay bet that and cursed a woman's child well i'm paraphrasing the full story is that a woman named jane leeds also called mother leeds had 12 children one day she found out that she was pregnant with her 13th child and out of frustration she cursed it by saying let this child be the devil eventually she would give birth normally however the child transformed into a creature with hooves after a little bit of time you know it had Sorry, hold on. It had hooves, a goat's head, bat wings, and, fork, and a forked tail. When it came out, it began growling and screaming and eventually flew out of the chimney and escaped into the New Jersey Pine Barrens. 
Apparently, the story may be related to the real-life Titan leads, who had this whole side story about a beef with Benjamin Franklin, where Benjamin Franklin incorrectly predicted his death and then started referring to him as the lead's ghost from then on. It was kind of silly to read about the early New Jersey political soap opera. At this point, I feel like I've said New Jersey too many times. I'm afraid it might come to get me, so I'll end this one here. While I don't think it's deserving of an S tier, I do think that objectively the creature is pretty cool. You know, the little family guy depiction, it's a dragon, it's it's whatever you want it to be, basically. I'll, I'll give it a clean A tier. Next up is the Modesto Witch. And I... This is... This is not an urban legend, I don't think. I was about to say this is an urban legend of all time, but like that that might not be true in and of itself. So I'm sure no one's gonna know this one. In fact, like I just said, it's not it's probably not even actual urban legend. Because the only thing I could find that even mentions it is one Reddit thread about the Modesto Witch that I can't find anymore without clicking on a link my friend sent me a few months ago. I might be cursed. I'm really only talking about this one because I wanted to find a niche urban legend in the general area around where I live. Now considering the area this story takes place, there's a good chance that whatever I'm about to describe to you can be explained by the usage of methamphetamine. So I'm going to ask you to take this with a heaping spoonful of salt. The story goes something like this. Originally being a Native American medicine woman, the Modesto Witch was banished from her tribe for practicing black magic. She roamed the area around Modesto, California for several decades, causing many disappearances before coming into contact with the Coven of Witches. Eventually, she gathered a following of people and established the Church of Fallen Angels. Using her knowledge of black magic, she began searching for a way to live forever, which was... Which she was able to accomplish by suspending her self in time through living in mirrors. Yeah, I, I don't think this is an urban legend, guys. To be honest, most of what I just said was actually heavily edited from the original post. I have a little script right here. I just wanted to make it sound a little bit believable. But, like, I was writing it and I was like, I can't... I just can't make that sound any... I can't make it sound reasonable, honestly. While thinking about what to talk about here, I actually was originally gonna put the homeless caves, but you know, that's not really an urban legend. That's just the thing that actually happened. Well, I can't just say the urban, or I, just, <laughs> I can't just say the homeless caves without explaining. Um, on the bank of the Tuolumne River near Modesto, it was discovered that homeless people had been living in a large cave system underground. It, it's crazy how the homeless people are leaving the nearby cities to go live in caves, and yet I still can't make my five minute walk to work without getting harassed by a homeless man. Anyway, uh, putting it up, I think I'm gonna go with uh, F tier. So. Since obviously this isn't a real thing, I put the, um, you know, the honored homeless man because I assume that's probably who came up with this little story. I think F tier is pretty sound. Next up, we have the seven gates to hell. Now, I don't know about you guys, but this is something I found in a creepypasta video when I was like nine years old. So none of these look like what they actually look like. Hold on. So basically, there's this place in York County, Pennsylvania. They have like um, have a bunch of gates just randomly scattered around everywhere. Um, that that doesn't sound very interesting, I know, but there are like two stories about how these gates supposedly got there. So in one of them, it was just like. Uh, an insane uh, an insane asylum was built in a remote location to isolate the crazies from society and eventually this place got got caught on fire according to this story the local firefighters were unable to reach the asylum in time to stop the fire due to the remote location leading to many of the residents being burned to death while many others were actually beaten while fleeing Again, I'm not sure about this story. None of these, you know, it's an urban legend. You gotta always take it with a grain of salt. 
The other story simply states that it was an eccentric doctor who built the gates. I really like the idea behind this whole urban legend because basically, you know, there's seven gates. Every gate you pass through takes you closer to hell until the final one where you just go to hell. And I, I like it. And one thing that I actually found very interesting is that the gates actually do exist. It's not, that's not just an urban legend, but you know, the stories behind it and the su supposed path to hell, I guess, you know, it has something tying it to reality as well, but it's not, I don't think those gates are going to lead you to hell, man. I'm going to give this one a B tier. All right, next up we have Skinwalkers. Now let me start by saying that while skinwalkers have their roots in Native American folklore, not really urban legends, I think the modern depictions are pretty far removed from the intentions and origins of the creature, so I'm comfortable calling like what this is an urban legend. With that out of the way, I will now describe exactly what a skinwalker is. Essentially, the skinwalker is a malevolent, shape-shifting witch. In modern depictions though, its original form is often shown to be like a coyote or a dog-like creature. Because the creature is said to be inherently malevolent, evil, you know, the concept of its shape-shifting abilities have given rise to many stories and sightings, especially in modern times where people can easily spread their possible experiences with the skinwalker through social media. With that comes deviations to the original story, uh, mainly specific characteristics. Some of the creative liberties people have taken regarding the skinwalker in modern times include the original form, as mentioned earlier, as well as adding the ability to mimic the voices of people it trans transforms into. There are some of the... These are some of the small deviations of the legend that have been molded into the modern era. The idea of the skinwalker is pretty terrifying, just thinking that someone you may know is actually a malicious entity is pretty horrifying however cliche that may sound skinwalkers can go in a tier they're they're pretty cool all right so i wrote like a whole little short story over here about the slit mouth woman classic japanese anything they have like the horror depiction and then like the anime waifu depiction it what for our, for our purposes today, this is the one we're looking at. So yeah, I had this whole little short story written up, you know, imagine this as night, the, the, imagine this, night has descended upon your city like a cold blanket, shit like that. But um, I'm not going to read all that. It's too much, I'm not reading it. Basically, what this is, is like a little life or death mini game that people have come up with. So a woman wearing a face mask will walk up to you. And then I believe it has to be nighttime. Who cares though? A woman wearing a face mask will walk up to you. She's tall. She's, I, I believe the urban legend states that she's pretty. So, you know, she has that going for her. Uh, she'll ask you if you find her beautiful. Depending on what you answer, I believe if you answer yes, she'll take off her mask. And if you answer no, she cuts you in half. You slay, queen. But, um, when she takes off her mask, you are posed with another question because when she takes off her mask you see her mouth is slit to I th what i read said ear to ear but this isn't from ear to ear her mouth is slit open and she asks you again depending on what you say uh, she takes different ap actions um if you say no she'll like maul you with her scissors and if you say yes she will slit your mouth to look like hers now what that means is there's no right answer here well, at least in that dialogue tree, there have been like a lot of people who try to like theory craft the solution to this question. Some people say you just tell her you're running late for something and then she'll bow politely and let you go. And some say there's just no way to win. That's about it for that. I really like this one, especially the depiction of just like the lady. She has a slit mouth, kind of Joker-esque. Uh, actually, I don't like that. We're going S tier. All right, Um, next up. This is the 2016 Killer Clown Sightings. Do any of you guys remember this? So basically, in like Halloween time 2016, there were a bunch of people who were just like putting on creepy clown masks and standing creepily on like highways and stuff. Um, you, you can see here, there's like this video. You know, that in and of itself, you know, that's a little, you're just being a little weird, but you know, that's cool the media took it way too far 
you know, n news around that time were like, there's gonna be a clown purge, all that. You know, obviously just the news making something out of literally nothing. But it actually did lead to some uh, not good things. There was a family in Florida who got like, they got beaten and robbed by like 20 clowns on Halloween night because it's kind of like the same thing with the Joker movie, the 2019 one, not the new shitty one, uh, where news was like, it's a popular movie and you know, all these mentally ill children are going to see it. You're going to shoot up a school, right? You, like you're going to shoot up the movie theater? Uh, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. Uh, basically, the news kind of did a Joker in 2019 to everyone, and then, you know, eventually... I, I don't remember if the Joker thing ended up... But we're getting off that train. Yeah, so it ended up with some people breaking into a Florida family's house and beating them. You know, other than that, though, most of the sightings were just... He's standing there! Menacingly! So, you know, harmless for the most part. There, there was some reporting that the clowns were trying to lure kids in with candy on playgrounds that's a different type of clown i don't think that really had anything to do with the killer clowns let's uh, we're done here i'm gonna give this one an f tier it wait uh actually we'll go d tier because it even though like something sad happened it's kind of funny remembering like how bad my parents were freaking out around that time like they really didn't want me going trick-or-treating alone okay yeah th i'm comfortable with d tier next up is lavender town syndrome you know if you had an autistic obsession with pokemon as a kid you probably already know what this is but for those of you who don't lavender town syndrome is an urban legend surrounding the original red and blue pokemon games rumors say that when reaching lavender town in the game the theme song that played had an extremely high frequency that only children and young teens can hear. These frequencies supposedly caused over 200 children to commit suicide and many others to complain of severe headaches. The games were subsequently changed to lower frequencies for future and international release releases. I'm not too big of a man to admit this story scared me as a kid. I really liked Pokemon, but in an innocent way, you know? It was like, look at Umbreon, he's so cool. Boy, I'm having so much fun playing this game, raising my pets, fighting alongside them. 200 children were found dead. Go Charizard! This urban legend was kind of my introduction to internet spooky stuff, so I wanted to include it here. You know, obvious bias incoming, but I'm going to give it an A tier. Uh, you can argue that that was all bias, but you make the tier list next time. Now we have Mothman. If you don't know who Mothman is, I'd actually be surprised. So this is Mothman. He has like a whole statue and everything. Basically, he's a cryptid who, who was way more popular than I thought he was. In West Virginian folklore, which is a term I never thought would come out of my mouth, Mothman is a humanoid creature that lives in the Point Pleasant area. The Mothman's appearance is described as being moth-like, if you can believe it, but mixed with the stature of a human. Sightings of the Mothman began in 1966 when two young couples from Point Pleasant, West Virginia reported to the police that they had seen a large black creature with glowing red eyes standing on the side of the road near the TNT area. Linda Scarberry, who was one of the people there, described what they saw as being a slender muscular man at around 7 feet tall with large white rings. R wings, not rings. He, he wasn't blinged out or anything. Uh, she got a good look at it, but was unable to discern its facial features due to its hypnotic glowing eyes. The group sped up and drove away quickly, but the creature screeched loudly and crashed the car. That's not what I had written down. He chased the car near the city limits of Point Pleasant. Sorry, uh, I'm dyslexic, I guess. Uh, this sighting led to what many people have described as mass hysteria with most people in the Point Pleasant area reporting sightings around this time. Uh, two volunteer firemen claimed to have seen it. One person said he flashed a flashlight at the creature. Another blamed the disappearance of his German Shepherd on it. I think that man should probably not be allowed to own animals anymore because, like, I, I just don't believe Mothman took your dog, man. Soon after the initial sightings, the hype kind of just died down, which I assume was because Batman already existed at this point. No sightings of the Mothman were reported for around a year until December 15, 1967, the Silver Bridge near Point Pleasant collapsed, an incident in which 46 people lost their lives. 
People quickly blame this on Mothman for some reason. I couldn't really tell you why, but Mothman is now associated with the unfortunate demise of 46 people. Now, the best part about Mothman is the fact that even though the people of Point Pleasant have made this thing out to be a symbol of disaster, he is quite literally the best thing to ever happen to Point Pleasant, ever. Every year, the city hosts the Mothman Festival, where they do normal festival things like pancake eating contests, city tours, and guest speakers, and it has an average turnout of 12,000 people. Mothman single-handedly keeps this town's economy not just stable, but booming. And for that, gets an S tier. I think that I I think that's fair, right? And that's actually gonna do it for today's tier list. Once again, if you have anything similar you'd like to see in the future, you know, leave it in the comments. You can tell me other cool urban legends. I'll look into them. Maybe next year I'll make another urban legend video. But that's about it for today. Bye.